Oh, <laughs> Natalia! It is hard to believe that the 25th anniversary of GoldenEye 007 is upon us. Like many of you out there, I'm sure, the game was a mainstay in my Nintendo 64 console with a multitude of hours sunk into its campaign and multiplayer modes. On top of my own personal nostalgia, GoldenEye is also an integral point in gaming history. Not only did it prove shooters could be pulled off on consoles, but it also proved not all licensed games are trash. To celebrate, we are taking a look back at the Nintendo 64 classic, GoldenEye 007. I originally wrote this review for the game's 20th anniversary, so like the rumors of GoldenEye 007 for Xbox and Switch, this review has been remastered for the 25th anniversary. The story of GoldenEye 007 follows the events depicted in the movie of the same name. James Bond is back to save the world against Russian plots and treasonous former agents. The game takes some leeway with its missions to include things never seen throughout the film, and a duo of bonus missions let us relive moments from older 007 movies. Every time I load up the game in the here and now, I get a real kick out of how far gaming has really come with its story presentation. While the N64 was limited in its video and voice work capabilities, the plot is conveyed nicely through pre-mission briefings and dossiers. Thankfully, it never gets too long to read through, unlike some other games at the time. After each mission, you will be greeted by a post-mission screen that treats you to a level debrief and a wealth of stats that range from accuracy to favorite weapon used. Being an early console shooter, you will be surprised by the amount of control you have in this game. While the N64 doesn't have dual analog sticks, you still have full control of your movement. Everything that has become standard in today's shooters is present with full strafing, free look, and crouching. Unlike many games today, dedicated leaning controls are also present which help give you more freedom in your combat approach. Unfortunately, the default control scheme in GoldenEye has you using legacy controls which helps perpetuate the claims that the game doesn't hold up. But, take 30 seconds to visit the options menu and swap to 1.2 Solitaire and be surprised at just how well the controls actually do hold up. Whether you play Default or Southpaw in today's games, the N64 controller is ready to accommodate as the C buttons or D-pad can be used to control your movement while the analog stick controls your aim. You can even hook up two N64 controllers to use dual analog sticks if digital movement is just not something you can handle. GoldenEye was so influential on me that it is the game that cemented my preferred layout for shooters that I still use today. Playing Apex and Halo with N64 style controllers is just as much fun, if not more, than using a standard controller just because of how much everyone flips out about it. Featuring a single player campaign that has 20 missions with 18 story levels and 2 unlockable levels, 3 difficulty levels, and 1 hidden difficulty, GoldenEye has a wealth of content to experience. To get through every level you need to rely on signature bond gadgets and multiple different weapons. Stealth mechanics also play an integral part for some missions, especially at higher difficulties. Difficulty levels add additional objectives to each level, and the higher the difficulty, the more challenging objectives and enemies you encounter. The game's built-in auto-aim functionality also decreases with each difficulty, leaving you to rely on your movement and manual aiming abilities to succeed. A nice quality N64 analog stick is a must to get the best experience, but are unfortunately harder to come by as the years go on. Thankfully, the Wireless Tribute 64 and Wireless Brawler 64 feature close proximities that still allow the game to be enjoyed to its fullest. Every level has an unlockable cheat code that varies from infinite ammo to paintball mode or each enemy being equipped with rockets. The requirements to unlock a number of these cheats will really put your skills to the test. After 25 years, there are a number I have finally obtained in my most recent playthrough. If you are hunting for them, you can use the post-mission screens to see how close you are to your goal. Multiplayer, believe it or not, was originally not intended to be a part of the game. Added in at the 11th hour, multiplayer would go on to be the king of the GoldenEye package. Multiplayer features multiple levels, some based off the campaign and some original, and numerous characters to choose from. More characters and levels can be unlocked with the use of button cheats and game shark codes. Two to four people can play per match with several different game types and weapon sets available. Power weapons and stack and proximity mines and facility will always remain some of my personal favorites. You only live twice and golden guns also resulted in a number of chaotic moments throughout middle school. Let us also not forget the useless club slash slappers matches that took forever. Sadly, what many probably remember most about GoldenEye multiplayer was the inclusion of Oddjob. Oddjob is a tiny character that would stand under the aim height of every other character. Many friendships across the globe have been ruined by the tiny hatted character. GoldenEye's multiplayer legacy lives on even today, with world championships taking place and a source mod that is a ton of fun to play with a large group. 
Being an early N64 game, graphics in GoldenEye are not that impressive when compared to what Rare came out with after, like Perfect Dark and Jet Force Gemini. Character models, weapons, and levels are blocky. Textures are decent from a distance and fit the game very well, but don't look as good up close. But GoldenEye is one of the first games I remember playing that also paid attention to details. Bullets leave holes in walls, shells eject from weapons, and characters start to show blood where they have been shot. At the end of some multiplayer matches, I have had some grotesque pure red characters. Unfortunately, this is also what led my parents to becoming more acutely aware of ESRB ratings. Animations were also a huge plus for the game in the day. Depending where you shot enemies, you could get a wide range of reactions. Let us never forget the hilarious butt shot animation. Death animations likewise had a wide variety. Smoke and transparency effects were also top tier for the time and even today are cool to look back on. And you do get to look at them a lot considering nearly everything explodes in a blaze of glory when destroyed. But my favorite graphical touch that was added to GoldenEye is the faces on most non-story characters being those of the development team. Dr. Doak is a personal standout over all these years. GoldenEye is also one of the few N64 games that supports native anamorphic widescreen capabilities. GoldenEye has some of my favorite N64 audio work to date. Music, while repetitive in levels, also fits each level's tone and makes it atmospheric. Despite music being compressed like most every N64 game, it isn't as noticeable in GoldenEye, which is a true plus. Gunshots, explosions, and ricochets are also crisp and precise. The sheer amount of variety in the sound effect work is also impressive given the time period and constraints of N64 cartridges. About the only thing I could do without is the constant character grunts and screams while being shot. As you can see, I have a lot of nice things to say about GoldenEye, but only blind nostalgia would keep you from also mentioning a few of the things that don't hold up so well. And no, I don't think the controls are part of that, as mentioned earlier. But the game's inventory system is extremely outdated by today's standards. Even at the time, having to go into the clearly awesome pause menu felt like a chore to equip certain mission objective items. It also doesn't help that you can be killed while the pause screen activates. Navigating through an increasing number of weapons and grenades for the right weapon is also a pain. Perfect Dark would streamline this process so much in just a few short years, and obviously in today's games it is pretty much a non-issue showing how far we have come in 25 years. Even more annoying is the wonderful NPC known as Natalia, or who I like to refer to as Dum Dum. While enemy AI is already an interesting thing to behold with its easily exploitable odd behaviors, Natalia takes it to 11 and single-handedly dampens the missions she is a part of. Everything from her pathing to scripted tasks just sucks to work through, especially on higher difficulties. Numerous levels have ended in failure because Natalia did something dumb like leave her task or straight up dies. Is it wrong that I shoot her in the head out of spite from time to time? My last personal frustration with GoldenEye comes from instances of fake difficulty with numerous levels continuously spawning enemies or having them shoot you out of draw distance range. There are also areas where enemies can shoot you through walls, but that is definitely the lesser of two evils in my mind, especially considering how often you can cheese them. Despite being 25 years old, GoldenEye still stands as one of the best N64 games ever made and an overall fantastic retro shooter. With its numerous missions and difficulties, it is a game anyone can easily get into, whether on original hardware or through emulation. Or Xbox and Switch if that version ever happens to appear. While many today will avoid the game based on bad controls or by how dated it looks, I still enjoy nights where I can convince a room full of friends that it is time to play GoldenEye. We of course agree no one can play Odd Job. Without the success of GoldenEye 007, who knows how much longer it would have taken for shooters on consoles to be accepted as viable. Would Halo or Call of Duty exist in the same way they do today without GoldenEye? Who knows? But because of its historical importance and solid gameplay, GoldenEye 007 will forever be a game that I revisit. Thank you all for making it to the end of today's retro review. I still cannot believe that GoldenEye is now 25 years old. This game has been with me an overwhelming majority of my life and just is going to stay there for the time being. And for many years to come, really. Like, let's be honest. I'm really happy to have gone through it again in this past month just to just relive the full experience, unlock everything for the first time ever, legitly. Like, it was just so much fun. It was so fun having a lot of you along for that ride as well. Just thank you all so much. 
I seriously can't thank you all enough for even spending a minute of time in this channel, be it in streams, videos, shorts, just any way that you help support it. It really means a lot to us and helps us keep it going and just being able to do it. But I do have a couple of big favors for you here at the end. If you haven't already, please hit that thumbs up, thumbs down button, depending on how much you like this retro review for GoldenEye 007. And hit that sub button and notification bell so you can see when new videos go live on the channel, be it tutorials, live, shorts, what have you. If you're interested in further helping support the channel, you can also check out that join button down here somewhere below this video player or the Patreon link that'll pop up here around my face area. Little goes a long way to keep this place going and bring more content just like this and the tutorials and other things directly to you. Big thank you to all of our current backers. Y'all have been so amazing. Just thank you for believing in what we do here and dropping that support month after month really means a lot. Again, and just thank you. But until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, you all stay awesome. Keep on gaming. We'll see you back next video.